Good morning. Our next step that we're going to work on in our analyzing our data to instruction is taking our class breakdown by goal report and being able to break it down into really analyzing what our students know and what they don't know um, as we look at their goals. So we're going to take um, our first step, which is our class breakdown by goal report. You need to make sure that you have that. Um, you also want to make sure that you have your class report that we worked on earlier this morning. We're going to use a piece of that um, as we analyze our data. And then you want to make sure that you have pages 14 and 15 open for your applying um, reports workbook. We're going to use those as well. So what our, our purpose that we're going to do is we're going to answer that question that you've been asking all morning, which is, now that I know what my students um, know and don't know, what do I do with it? So we're going to take that information and really break it down to the skills that our students need. So first step, um, if you look on page 14, um, is we need to identify a content area. We're going to stick with reading. Um, I'm going to model for you exactly how I'm going to fill out my um, data to instruction framework for you. So I'm going to stick with reading. And then step two talks, of, well actually still in step one, is an area that you're going to be teaching soon. So within the area of reading, I'm going to be working on characterization. I know that I'm going to be teaching that soon, and so I want to make sure that my um, I am focused on that particular concept as we're working towards that. So if you look on your page 15, um, I have filled out reading. And then I have filled out characterization um, for step one. Step two says identify the goal area and sub-goal area in the learning continuum that's related to the chosen standard or topic. So if you look at your class breakdown by goal report, we have three goals for reading, which is our reading strategies, which is comprehending literary text, comprehending informative and persuasive text, and then our word relationships and meaning. Well, characterization is one of those reading comprehension skills, and so I want to make sure that that's the goal area I'm going to target with my class. So in that goal and sub-goal area, that's where I'm going to write reading strategies, comprehending literary text. So that's what I'm going to write there because that is the goal area for this particular lesson I'm going to be focusing on. So that's what I'm going to write down for step three right here is reading strategies comprehending literary text. So as we move on to step four, um, this is where I have to determine where the middle of my class is. If I were going to teach to the middle, what is that? And so there's three different places you can get this piece of information. You can um, go with your normative data. What's the middle for the norm? Well, this is okay if your class is pretty close to the norm. Um, the second place that you can go to get this information is you can look at your teacher class or, or class report that we looked at earlier this morning. So um, you can look up here and you can see that um, your me my median writ is 197. The other place that might be helpful to look on this is to actually look at the median writ for the goal area that I'm working on. So the median writ for my goal area for reading strategies, comprehending literary text is actually 195. So I actually wrote both of those on my piece of paper, 197, 195 so that I know what I'm where I in the middle of my class is the other way that you could do it depending on what your class breakdown looks like sometimes you can eyeball it um, sometimes teachers have a really nice bell curve um, and so they have a clustering right in the middle um, that it's very easy to see where the mo majority of their students in the middle are um, Unfortunately, not every class is a bell curve, and so sometimes you need to go with the data rather than just eyeballing it. So I'm going to go with the data and write that down. So that would be step four is determining the middle. So for me, that middle for my goal is a 195. Now that I have that piece of information, I can move on to step five on page 14, and it says... I need to identify what scores are above and what scores are below. So if I look at my class breakdown by goal report, 
what I have in front of me is um, my writ ranges. And so my 195 falls right in that writ range of a 191 to 200. So with my class, I have three students right in the middle. And then I'm going to say that below is everything on this side and above is everything on this side of that writ range. So I'm now able to fill in who has the middle score range of 191 to 200. And then I'm going to say below is everything below that. So 161 all the way to 190. And above is going to be everything from 201 up to the highest writ range, which is on my 230. So I'm going to fill that out. And then I'm going to list the students' names um, that fall into those writ ranges. This is a kind of a primary um, grouping of my students into a, 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 high, a low, a middle, and a high range so that I can kind of get a feel for not only their ranges um, in this particular one trait, which is characterization that I'm going to be working on, but I can also have an idea of, of how I might want to group them. The other thing that I did, because I wanted a little bit more information, is not only did I put my students into the um, the low, below, middle, and above, but I also kind of put them into a group and wrote their writ ranges right next to it. One of the things that confuses teachers a lot is there's a number right next to that student in parentheses. Now, that number might not match that writ range square that they're in. That number right next to it is actually their median writ or their mean writ, their average for the entire test. So it might not be within that particular box for that goal range. So that is that showing a strength and a weakness sometimes, but know that sometimes those don't match because they might have scored low in that goal area even though their mean writ might there be in another area. So you need to make sure that that parentheses doesn't always match that particular writ range that they happen to fall in for a goal area. That's sometimes confusing to teachers. Once you have all of your students listed in below, middle, and above, then we get to start really accessing what do I teach? What does that mean now that I've grouped my students? And how do I go about teaching and knowing what they know and what they need to know. Well, this is where um, a lot of teachers like to have that paper um, report, which is very helpful at a glance to know where your students are. But one of the wonderful things about the MAP report online um, is there is actually a live link so that when you click on that student's name, it takes you to the continuum of learning. And that continuum of learning tells you the skills that that student is ready to learn. So if I were to click right here in the 191 to 200 range on that student's name, it takes you into the continuum of learning and it tells you this student is ready to learn these skills. It also tells you on the left hand side which skills they've mastered most. They mostly have mastered, let me put that the other way, they've mostly mastered, and then the ones that they're going to be ready to learn next. So as a result of that, um, the live link is very, very helpful. So as you have your computers out in front of you, go ahead, I always like to start in the middle. The middle is a great place to start, and it's a, it's a place to kind of get your, your bearings and your anchor for your entire class. So go ahead and go to your median um, writ range, 